Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now before going to the broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Father, we honor you today. Thank you for the opportunity to receive your truth. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us into all truth. And I declare right now, every body is lifted, yokes destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, quickly, quickly, we stopped at Zechariah chapter 6, talking about Jesus. Now, I'm showing you in prophecy how Jesus is connected to Melchizedek. I was telling you yesterday that he didn't function in his ministry while he was on the earth. Now you need to understand this. The ministry of Jesus was not to die. The death of Jesus was a makeshift, not us, was a necessary ministry that was given to him so that he would clear the problem that would that was hindering him from fulfilling his real purpose his real purpose was to give us life let it sink let it sink so now i mentioned this one of those days i said it's it is just possible if man had not seen, Jesus would not necessarily have been born of a woman. He would have just showed up just like Melchizedek did to Abraham. He would have just shown up and minister life to man. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. He would have done that. Because the only reason he was born was so that he would be able to die and pay for our sins. But the real ministry of Jesus, he did not carry it out because he had to ascend his throne. So let me show you something yesterday, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 12. He says, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Now, this temple is not the physical temple. This temple is what Jesus said, I will build my church. That's what he was referring to here. Then now in verse 13, he says, Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and sit, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. So he was a king. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. A priest having a throne. So he's a, king, a priest. And then he also, he is a king. Now watch this. And the council of peace shall be between them. Now, let me show you something in Hebrews chapter 5. No, Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 1. Watch this. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, notice he called him king of Salem, priest of the most high God. So this one person is a king. And then also he is a priest. Now, he... David prophesied and said, God is giving him the priesthood 
after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus. Name. And then God is also speaking of him as a king. Did you get that? Because because there are lots of prophecies. Let's let's look at mm, Isaiah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's look at Isaiah chapter eleven. Let me show you this now. It says, "And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. There shall come forth a." rod out of the stem of Jesse. Now, Jesse is the father of David. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, I want to show you something here. There's a reason he said a stem, a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall come out of his roots. Like, like I said, Jesse is the father of David. Now, when you study, why did he use Jesse? Why didn't he say someone else? Now, when you study the genealogy of Jesus, this you will find in Matthew, book of Matthew and then in the book of Luke. Now, when you study the book, the gen genealogy of Jesus, you're going to realize something. Now, in Matthew, the Bible gives us the genealogy of Jesus through Joseph. But then we know that Joseph was not really the father of, the, of Jesus. So if you're tracing genealogy, Joseph wouldn't be the right person. But then in Luke, he now gives us the genealogy of Jesus also. And in Luke, he actually gave us the genealogy through Mary and her father. And if you study both, you are going to find out that both lineage ended up in David. So where it was from David that they split and then one went this way, the other went this way and then they met again when Joseph and Mary met. So Joseph was actually the son of David and Mary is actually the daughter of David. I mean great, great granddaughter. Because because they, are, they, are, they were all David's children. I mean, Solomon, um, Solomon produced Joseph and um, another of Beersheba's son, Nathan, produced Mary. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? That's the blood lineage that they followed. So when it says a branch shall come out, that, that, that's why you see the Bible gives us this information like the genealogy. He gave that to prove that this scripture, Isaiah, this prophecy of Isaiah was perfect, was accurate, was right. Are you getting? So he was referring to no other one but Jesus. So he says, that one that is going to come. And he called him the branch. Let me show you another one in, in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. And verse 5. Watch this. Yeah, Jeremiah 20 verse 5. said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. See, here he calls him a king. A king from David. He was talking about the branch. You see that word, the branch also. He was talking about Jesus. So, he had this role to play. And Zechariah was very clear about it. His job is to build the temple of the Lord. And that temple is not a physical temple. That temple is we. So, he was to build us up into the father that's his job and guess what that is what he began to do from the day the holy ghost came so jesus began the work of his ministry not on the cross 
No. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, that was when Jesus began his ministry. What ministry? Ministry of administering life. Ministry of raising us up. Ministry of building the temple, which is the church. You are his building, brothers and sisters. So every work that he's doing in you, he's building you up into the Father. And he's building you up into what the Father said in Genesis chapter 1. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Glory to God. And that work he is doing till this day. Now because we don't know, you know, we rejoice so much in the fact that Jesus died for us. Wonderful. But his work is far more than dying for us. Let us not so, you know, people just go, oh, if not Jesus, man, nah, this sin you just committed now, nah, you'd have just received one boost. No, sir. No, there is much more. There is much more. There is much more. So when he begins to say there is therefore now no condemnation, it's not because, ah, listen, there is a higher life that he has called us to live. And we are supposed to receive this ministry from him. So Jesus now is standing as our high priest. And also he's standing as a king to execute judgment on the earth. His ministry is to us. As high priest, I'll tell you what he's doing. And you need to, you need to understand this. As high priest, remember when he met Abraham, he taught Abraham concerning the tithe, and then he received the tithe from Abraham. Then, today, Jesus is the same priest, and he walks in the office of Melchizedek. So, what do you think he's doing? He's got two responsibilities, two main responsibilities in that office and one is to receive the tithe from us today and the other is to bless us and now i said bless us now i want to explain what that means when i said bless us i'm not saying me that brought the tithe he will bless me no sir understand it the blessing is beyond you because God made a promise to Abraham and he says, Through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I see many people talk today, you know, they say, Jesus never spoke about tithing. Jesus, if tithing was important, Jesus would have spoken about it. They are, they are, I'm sorry to say, they are so ignorant. See, that's why I'm taking time to share all this background with you. He, no, 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 number one, you don't talk to the Jewish man about tithing. Why would you talk to the Jewish man about tithing? It has become a tradition for them. Like I say, it's like someone going to deeper life and start preaching, you know, how women should cover their hair and, and, and dressing and things like that. Everyone was looking at you strange. I mean, it, it, that is what we do. Do you see anyone here misbehaving in terms of that? No. You understand what I'm saying? So you don't go to a Jewish man and start telling him, um, you know, why it's important to tithe. I mean, it's a tradition. They, they tithe as a tradition. And I've told you this before, even the donkey that Jesus rode on, you know, went to go into, that was someone's tithe. Because as a tradition, God had told them, Every three years, you will bring out the tithe to your gates. And the, the, the Levites, the widow, they will come and take us to they will come and take as much as they want. So that's why Jesus told the disciples, go there, you will see this thing tied. Losing it. Then he said, If anybody asks you, tell them the Lord has need of it. Now, why did he say tell them the Lord has need of it? So they will know that these guys, okay, they are from the temple or something. So, because it was kept there for the Lord. It was someone's tithe. Get it. 
So they were, they were, it was a normal practice to them. So why should you talk about it? Secondly, even Jesus said, there are many things I'm going to tell you that you cannot receive now. So he didn't bother teaching them things. And, and like I said, that's why you need to understand what I'm sharing with you. He, he didn't come into the fullness of these things until after he rose from the dead. Praise God. <laughs> and my time is up. We'll continue tomorrow. Father, we just thank you for the knowledge and understanding you're bringing to us. We submit to these things, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.